my god. You did it. Yep, it's mine. It's mine. Oh my god, he's so cute. Oh, oh baby. Oh my god. <laughs> Like the day before You're like a stone on my pillow I don't make a sound when I shut the door oh, You don't have to wake up yet oh, Okay You don't need this right now What's up my friends, Christy here. Today I'm gonna to be talking about my birth story with my little Tezeo here. He is now five weeks old. If you're new, I have six children. Tezeo is the youngest, but he is my first biological child. So therefore the first child that I birthed. This was a vaginal delivery and um, it's definitely a story for sure. I'm sorry, there's noises here and it's because it's summer vacation. So I've got my other five kids running around doing things. I don't know if you can hear, but that's life. I want to film this video so that I can have these memories for later because oftentimes we forget a lot about our birth and labor and delivery stories. Also want to share things that people did not share with me. A lot of things happened that I had never heard of and that I didn't expect and I wasn't really prepared for. So I hope that this helps other mamas that are about to give birth for the very first time. So the story begins around my 37 week of pregnancy. I went in for my routine OB appointment and my blood pressure was quite high and they wanted to watch it so they run a bunch of blood tests and I did have a lot of protein in my blood stream so they were concerned about that so they scheduled a high risk doctor's appointment which I had been going to um, three or four times throughout my pregnancy because I'm 39 years old and that's considered high risk even though everything else was considerably healthy in my pregnancy besides the high blood pressure at the very very end so I went in and my blood pressure was even higher and my heart rate was racing I think there was a lot of anxiety there they were like how do you feel about having a baby today and I'm like I guess so at that point I just wanted to go in and get it over with I was uncomfortable going home and having that high blood pressure and that high heart rate it was definitely giving me a lot of anxiety and I just wanted to get him out. So I was hoping that they would admit me, but they did not have any spots available. So they said to come in the very next day, which would be 37 weeks, four days at 9 p.m. to be induced. And I was hoping to not be induced because I'd heard horror stories about the pain, but it is what it is for my health and for the baby's health. We just needed to get him out. They gave me something, I forget the name of it, but they gave me something to put under my tongue and it started to dissolve um, to jumpstart the induction. I forget what it's called. They gave me that and the first one didn't really work. Supposedly it's supposed to soften your cervix a little bit, which helps with dilation, I believe. And then they gave me another dose at four in the morning. I started to feel wetness down there and I started to feel um, something and I was kind of scared I didn't know what it was so I asked the nurse and she's like oh maybe you just peed yourself and I'm like this doesn't feel like it it's like trickling a lot I'm not sure and I, I said I think my water broke and she's like no it's not so around 4 30 about 30 40 minutes later I got up to go to the bathroom and I felt a lot more. It was on the floor, it was in the toilet. I woke my husband up and he was sleeping on the tiny little couch in the birthing room. And I'm like, babe, I think my water broke. He got up, he's like, oh, what, really, really? And the nurse came in and she's like, yes, your water did break. We had to change the bedding and everything. The contractions came really, really strong after that. The combination of whatever they gave me to soften my cervix and my water breaking, I was just like full force pain. Um, it was getting closer together and it was hard for me to breathe. It was 
hard for me to concentrate on anything. For the next three to four hours, my labor got so intense that I could not even speak. My husband was just like, breathe, breathe through it. I was trying my best, but the pain was so bad and I asked for an epidural. They said that I needed to be at least three to four centimeters. So it took a while. I finally got an epidural, I believe around 12 or one the next day. So it took me that long to get to four centimeters. As far as the epidural, there's a lot of drama that went on with the epidural. And I can see why a lot of people try to do this completely naturally because there was a lot of complications for me with the epidural. First of all, yes, it took the edge off immensely, but there was a lot of drawbacks to the epidural. First of all, I had to sit up in the bed and I had to hunch over as much as I could for them to get the needle in between my spine into like the cartilage or the, and it didn't work the first time it hit the bones. So they had to poke twice. The pain made it very difficult for me to stay still to get the epidural. And on top of that, they were so close together. There was literally like three to four seconds in between and you have to hold still for at least two minutes to be able to have the epidural be administered. So it was really difficult for me. I was in the worst pain and having to just sit there and gently breathe and stay as still as I could. So that being said, it took them a couple pokes and I felt this big jolt down my left leg, which I was so scared when I felt that because I'm like, is that normal? I don't know. But then after they finally gave me the epidural and then I started to sit back up, I felt the worst headache ever. It was the most intense throbbing pain ever. It went away after a couple minutes, but it was very, very strange. And then I laid down and then after 10, 15 minutes, things started to calm down a little bit. I was able to breathe through the contractions. It felt more like intense pressure rather than excruciating pain. So it definitely did work. There were more complications with the epidural after I gave birth, but I'll talk about that once he comes out in the story. <laughs> Around 2.30, they were like, okay, it's time to start pushing, but I'm letting you know that it's going to take a while for you to get him out because he is faced up. So babies usually come out head first, facing down, which I didn't ever thought about that if they were face up or face down, but he was, his face was up. So every time I would push, his head would hit my pelvic bone and he would just bounce back and that's not fun. So I kept pushing and pushing and then I had to stop pushing because I had the most intense fire pain in my lower back and they said because he was face up, it was like having a back labor and it was causing a ton of pain. I could not move forward and push anymore because the pain was so excruciating. So they ended up giving me another little dose of the epidural to help me through it. After about 10 minutes, I started feeling the pressure and the pain go away in my lower back. And so I'm like, okay, I'm ready to continue to push. I pushed for three and a half hours at the last hour you know we were just like what's going on i'm pushing i'm straining my neck hunched over pushing and he's just not coming out and i can hear my husband talking to the doctor like what happens if we she can't push him out and he we can't get underneath the pelvic bone and she's like well we can either use the vacuum suction which i really didn't want or we can go ahead and go through with the c-section and in my head i'm just like i need to get this baby out Thankfully, my heart rate was fine. His heart rate was fine. You know, there were no issues there as far as heart rate where we had to race into emergency C-section. Really wanted to try to have him vaginally because the recovery I have heard is better <laughs> with a vaginal delivery. You know, everyone is different. Some people tear. Some people have to be cut to get the baby out, you know, and sometimes your C-section stitches heal sooner. Everyone is different, so just keep that in mind. And I know it's hard to give someone advice on birth because every situation, every birth is different. Once I heard about the vacuum suction and the C-section, I'm just like, I've got to do this. They ended up giving me one of those bars um, to help, 
you know, meet push. And that really, really helped. I was getting tired of holding my legs back. And my, of course my husband was helping, but I just needed a different position. And I wish I would have tried like on all fours. I guess I couldn't have done that because I had the epidural, but I wish I would have tried like on the side or different positions. But because of the epidural, it, being on my back was just the easiest. The bar did seem to help a little bit and they took it away right at the very, very end. But that I feel like is what got his head to go under and enter the birth canal and kind of make his way out. It was a period at the very end where it was really encouraging. My husband was just telling me every step of the way like babe i could see his hair he's almost here he was getting emotional and it was just so so sweet to hear him he's like oh my gosh he's almost here one more push babe one more push you've got it you're almost there and it was just really sweet to see him in that environment and coaching me and encouraging me and helping me to get him out because <laughs> mama was burnt out pushed him out, his head popped out, and they're like, quickly, quick, push again. And then I took one deep breath and just, whoo, he just came out like a baby whale. <laughs> just like, <"Whoo." laughs> I could felt him being like ejected from my body. Just that sensation of just like, <sighs> and I just took a deep breath and I looked at him and I'm just like, wow, he's a big baby. <laughs> he looked really big at the time, but I just can't, for all you new mamas out there, that sensation and that feeling of your baby just like coming out of your body is just like everything. It feels like the highest level of accomplishment ever to be able to have that baby come out and you see this child and hear that baby's cry. Now, Tizeo did not cry right away, but it didn't take too long. They instantly put him on my chest and they just started rubbing him and squeegeeing his mouth and then he was letting out the most adorable cutest little like animal noise oh my god you did it yep it's good it's oh my god he's so cute oh, oh baby <laughs> oh. it was so cute but for me, birthing my child was amazing, but the highlight of that entire experience was to see my husband in that element. And, you know, we have five other children that we even got from newborns, but to be in that birth, to have that birth experience and to see what his emotions were and how he acted and how he dealt with it all and just to experience that with him was like the highlight for me. And to hear his emotions when he came out to see his son was just like i will never forget like the tone in his voice of that moment i will never forget it luckily because tezeo was healthy they kept him in the room the entire time right when they rubbed him off and he was able to breathe they brought him over to the scale weighed him cleaned him off a little bit my husband went with him and they put like tags on him and all that and his diaper and his beanie i had second degree tears multiple and i was getting stitched up and my doctor was getting the placenta out and doing all the things that she needed to do to make sure that mama was healthy and stitched up i asked my husband if he wanted to do skin to skin with him and it was the sweetest reaction he's like yes yes i do <laughs> so um he sat down in the chair and he was able to do like 15 minutes of skin to skin with him which was such an amazing experience. Seeing our son with my husband doing skin to skin was just an amazing memory. I posted the video clip on my Instagram. I posted all these like first time moments of when we first met him and when my, my husband first held him, going home when my five kids first held him and met him, and first bath, all those are on my Instagram. So make sure you follow me there if you wanna kind of see all those first with our baby Tizeo. As far as me, after the doctor cleaned me up and the placenta was all out and I got stitched up, I finally was able to hold him and he looked completely different than he looks now. He was so swollen and um, it just, that's why he looked so big to me because he was so swollen and he looked completely different than he looked now. Like I'll put a little side by side what he looked at like when he first came out. 
<laughs> he's so cute. But when you think about it, you know, he's been living in, you know, my amniotic fluid, like water for his entire life. So he was like swollen and like lighter in skin tone and his toes and his fingers were kind of wrinkly and his nail beds were purple. It took a couple days for like his coloring to come in and the purpleness to go away. I didn't know that. My kids needed me. After he was born, uh, we moved to a different room and more of a, instead of a birthing room, it was recovery room. That's what it was. I was in a lot of pain. Um, my neck hurt really, really bad right here underneath my head. And I thought that from all that three and a half hours of constantly pushing, I sprained my neck. I thought that for weeks. And after lots of research, I found out that it was actually a side effect from the epidural. Um, I had the worst neck pain ever. And it really put a damper on my experience my first week with him. It was so painful and it was hard for me to do anything. On top of that, I was completely wiped out. I could not keep my eyes open. I, it was really frustrating because <clears throat> I couldn't just reach over and get him from the bassinet without terrible pain. Like I physically couldn't do it. Thank goodness my husband was in the hospital with me and he was able to just like pick him up and give him to me. But it was really um, difficult for me because as a mom of five at the time before this little one came, I am a go-getter. I do everything. I am on my feet all day long packing lunches and cleaning and organizing and working and vacuuming and doing dishes and planning and just doing everything. I am constantly on the go. There's never a down moment and it was really difficult for me to be in that much pain and not be able to do what I needed to do. And I know, you know, it's okay to take it easy when you just have a baby. I really is, but I really wanted to just do what I could to take care of my kids. I didn't wanna just lay in bed all day, but unfortunately I had to, I had to take care of myself. But it was difficult because I would lay in bed all day and rest and nap and I still wouldn't feel better. I still wouldn't be well rested and I still wouldn't feel like I could get up and do things. It was really difficult. I just felt like I could not get the strength or the energy to do anything. Me being a busy mom, that was really difficult for me. And thank goodness for my husband who was just there for me to take care of the other kids so I could just lay in bed with him. And my parents were here, which was a huge help. So lots of pain. I'm sorry, there's noises here and it's because it's summer vacation. So I've got my other five kids running around doing things. I don't know if you can hear, but that's life. So we were in the hospital for two and a half days after Tazeo was born. And that was because I was just in so much pain. They literally wanted us to like leave after 24 hours, but I just physically couldn't do it because my neck was in so much pain. Like I was dreading even getting into a wheelchair to go from wheelchair to the car because I didn't want my head up for that long because the pain was so bad. Like when I would just go to the bathroom and come back, I would be completely worn out for the next hour or two from just holding my head up to go to the bathroom and then get back in. And that was really difficult to like brush my teeth or take a shower or do anything. I didn't wanna do anything in the hospital because of the pain. Still healing from the tears and there's been lots of other things going on with postpartum with emotions and pain and all that stuff. Maybe I'll make a video of like my postpartum journey because there's definitely a lot to talk about. It's very eventful. But this is just the birth story for now. He did end up going to the NICU uh, for three days shortly after he was born. And I'll probably make a video about our whole NICU journey and story and stay because that is just a mouthful and way too much for this video. <sighs> yeah way too much, but he's healthy now, but it was kind of scary there for a minute. Uh, that is the birth story of my sixth child, but my first birth, I would have not have changed anything for the world if it meant that we 
didn't have this baby or if it was a different baby um we are just so in love my husband and i and so are all five of my kids if you follow me on instagram you know because i post videos and clips of them together all the time he is just such a joy and such a blessing and such a little grunter and a really good eater <laughs> yeah i'll definitely have to share more with you guys about um, my postpartum and the nikki state and our breastfeeding journey and all that in a different video but for now i hope you guys enjoyed the birth story of tezeo edward cruz <laughs> thank you guys so much don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye guys Thank you.